That's a lot of lumber. So one more log, eh? Yeah, this is the last of 22 logs that were here. I had them put here with a, uh, a loader, bobcat loader, and uh, put them on these tracks so that uh, they roll easily. They're off the ground. Otherwise, it's really difficult to get them to roll. And so you're going to get this up the hill. About 100 feet, would you say? Probably about 100 feet. Using your little ATV and a cable. Yeah. Here's a choker and my cable. Choker and cable. I'll just wrap it, roll, uh, wrap it around it so it unrolls. So these were um, felled about a year ago? Yeah, yeah about a year ago. A year, Makes year it so the bark comes off easier if they sit about a year. Nice. Yeah. Redwood. Yeah. So now you're setting the choker. Yeah, I'm going to set the choker so that I have something that locks in when it uh, starts unrolling. Yeah, see, when it unrolls, I've got something that doesn't come loose. What's the length of this oh, redwood log? 50 foot cables. The, the, the cable is 50 foot? Yeah. How about the log itself? It's a 16 foot log. 16 foot log. And it's uh, around a 30 inch diameter. Mm -hmm. Let's see. 30 inch diameter. 30 inch diameter. How about that? So maybe 80 years old? Yeah, that's what I'd guess. Mm -hmm. Wrap it round. Well, you couldn't wrap it round if it wasn't up on your logs, on your... No, that would be, I'd have to dig a trench under well, it. Um, is this like standard logging practice? <laughs> well, I don't exactly have logging tools here. Okay. I have logged before, but this is not logging really. Okay, cool. Well, let's just see how it, hap how it works. So now you're going to roll it up again? Yeah, I have to roll it up again, but also see how the log is coming more on this side? It's coming this way. Yeah, I thought I saw that. Well, that's yeah. because it's, it's, the diameter's bigger on that side than this side. Ah. So every time it rolls, it that wants... side goes farther than that side. I was noticing it was wanting to roll in so my direction. So now I have to take and I have to lever that side so that it's more this way. So to kind of pull it parallel again? Yeah. See, what I have to do is I have to get this part of the log ahead of that part so that it's kind of diagonally and it pulls back on. Yeah, you're inching it along. Yeah, that's about it as you inch it along. Well, you're about a good six inches. Hey, Chris. Hey, supervisor. Yeah, you tell him. That might be enough. So the narrow end is leading now. Yeah, the narrow end is leading by probably, probably about a foot. Uh -huh, so it might be enough to get you up the hill? Yeah, I hope so. Okay. Hope I don't have to do that again. <laughs> <laughs>
So this log is going to become lumber like the stack beside you. Come two by eights and four by eights, yep. And all that top layer was done today, it was lashing rain this morning, so all the dry wood is fresh, fresh yeah, cut. Yeah, it was fresh cut this afternoon. Will you keep pulling it forward with the machine or by hand now? Uh, see. Yeah, actually I'm on flat ground now. I really don't have to pull it any further. Uh -huh. All I need to do is get it so uphill. I didn't I wasn't trying to roll it uphill. So yeah. yeah, that'll be great. Good. Perfect. And now you'll roll it in with the, the bar. Yeah, and all the rest will just be with the bar after I Clean the sawdust up, mark out the ends, what I want to do, and yeah. So it'll take me a couple hours to get everything done before I'm ready to uh, cut it on the mill. I want to cut the ends off so I can write on the ends to decide to get oh. the maximum amount to cut out of it. So you'll clean, like, because the end here, I can see it's a lot, it's kind of rough, you couldn't write on it. Yeah. yeah. And so behind you here, there's a nice stack of wood. Um, right, and that's all heartwood. There's, I don't see any yellow. Yeah, I cut all the heart, all of the sapwood off. I'm only cutting for heartwood okay. because all of the projects I'm doing are exterior. Okay. And the uh, uh, sapwood would just rot right away. Okay. So in this climate, heartwood is desirable for outdoor projects. Yeah. yeah well, post beetle get to it and it rots. Yeah. So yeah, you don't want to use sapwood. It's fine if you're doing interior. Yeah. But no, I'm not doing any interior, so there's no point in having a sapwood. So the ATV works great. Yeah. But it is a 770-pound ATV too. So. Aha. Uh -huh. 780 pounds. So. Yeah. So yeah. it's a heavier ATV. Uh -huh. So over 350 kilos almost. And then, um, what weight is your is your cable there? Your choker cable? Uh, I think it's rated at about pulling. I can't remember. Fifteen thousand pounds, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. So the big. log is probably only that log's probably only a little over a ton. Yeah. You know, maybe two to three thousand pounds. Yeah. Okay, you're taking the bark off. Yeah. Well, there's uh, there's dirt in, and and. Uh, sand and rocks in the bark from the work with the machinery that when it dr was drug around. Oh. So I want to keep the log clean for when I mill it so I don't get the uh, my blade yes. uh, dull. So now you've got a flat surface <clears throat> that you can draw what I want on it. Draw what you want on it. And uh, <clears throat> draw it so that I get the most out of it. And uh, try not to have this big heart crack in too much of the wood. Now I see why you wanted to slice off the end of the log. Yeah. Make it clean. Yeah, so I can write on it and, just, and uh, see what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. But see, I can, I'll do all four by eights, four by sixes, and two by eights out of this. Okay. But, uh, so I'll I... lay out this side, mm -hmm. and then the other side, I'll lay out exactly the same. 
but so, you, so but, you're maximizing your wood from the smallest end first. Yes, because that's yeah. what really counts. Yeah. I mean, some areas like I have a little sapwood there of this. Yeah. But that'll run out into all heart yes. pretty quickly. Yes. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go for a little bit of sapwood. Yeah. And so you have particular projects in mind, so you know the dimensions that you want. Yeah, I know what I need. I need mainly four by eight, four by six, yeah. and uh, two by two by eight. Okay, so everything you put an X on is going to be cut. Yeah, will be uh, right. Right. We'll have some heart cracking on these two by eights, but it, so some will be good and some won't. And then I'll try to have see this end down that because I have more room here because I have uh, things that hold the log in place. So it looks like you're about level now, acceptable. Yeah, that's good now. That's yeah. close. So now, now I can lay out the other side the same. And you couldn't do that unless you had a level. Unless I had a level, oh. see? Uh, explain that. Well, I have to be able to make a line that's on the other side the same as on this side. Two by eights will have the heart, heart in them. So some of them will be good and some won't. But at least I've limited it to, you know, a smaller amount of material. Yes. So that's the same as on the other side. Yes. Everything's laid out the same on both sides, so I can align it to the mill. I can align the mill each end of the log uh, from side to side to the mill, and I can al align the nice. up and down to um, align the mill to the log up and down too, so that this line hits that line when I run the mill through and it makes this cut here at the same side over on the other side. And so it looks different this end because this was the part of the tree closest to the ground so it's wider. Right, it's bigger. So the log is in position now with the mill. Well not quite. What I have to do, uh, I've already done this, I have to uh, level it so these lines are level which I've done. There's three things I'll try to achieve with this log to get it lined up with the mill. First, I want these lines level. Yeah. Then I want each end of the be the uh, log to be aligned the same distance to the mill with these vertical lines, and then I'll adjust the height of the mill relative to the horizontal lines. So each end of the beam and uh, log have to relate to each other the same. Yeah. Okay. So this is level now. So I've got that level. So the next thing I have to do is I need to get each side these vertical lines uh, which are parallel with the beam I want them the same distance on each side so I'm five inches here yeah so now I'll go to the other side and see what I have to do to get it the same okay we'll see what I've got now And here I have two and seven eighths, two and seven eighths. And I got three and a half here, so I got a little bit further. Little touch more. Same on both sides, three and seven sixteenths. Okay. So now I need to make sure it's level again because I've been moving it around. And it's pretty close. Pretty close. I just have to let off a little bit, just a hair. Okay, it's level. Good. That's it. 
Okay, so now I'll lock the log in place. And uh, the way I do that is with these cutouts. If you have a big machine and you can bring your log in and set it in place down on these, that works great. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a big machine to do that. Yeah. So I have a different system I use. So I'll do it over here. And then so if you don't lock it in place, then as you mill, it'll slowly shift the log, or even quite fast. Yeah, the log will keep moving. Keep moving. Yeah, you yeah. just wouldn't get good cuts. Yeah. What are those wedges doing there now? They're this piece that had the cutout, yeah. there, it's raising that cutout up onto the log. Ah, okay, great. On both sides. Yeah. Oh, since I don't have a system where I'm setting the log down on these cutouts, and it would be really pretty secure. The whole weight of the log would be on it. Mm -hmm. I'm using a double system. I'll use these dogs that I made out of aluminum after I get these placed. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to have a big machine that I have to lift logs with. Mm -hmm. It's just one more piece of machinery that I have to maintain. <laughs> okay, so now we'll uh, position the dogs. Now let's have a look at these ones. These are so you're kind of going to double up on your precaution here. Yeah, so these dogs with theirs, uh, I have these beams, the uh, solid beams the uh, log rolled in on, and then these dogs are cut out I see. with screws, so I'll hammer these in yeah. so they bite on each side, and I'll get a screw uh, drill and screws. See that goes in nice and solid. Yeah. They really bit in. Okay. So the fourth metal dog in place. Yeah. So next I have to uh, determine the height of the beam to the log on each end, so that it's the same to the. Uh, pieces of uh, dimensional material I've laid out. Each side of the beam to be the same to the horizontal lines I've made on the log. So now I can just measure down to uh, this is 13 inches right here. See the advantage of this is with this mill is I instead of raising or lowering the log I can raise or lower each end of the beam on the mill. It's brilliant. So you're really utilizing what the mill is capable of. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's great. Yeah. It'd be really a big job trying to raise this log and secure it. Yeah. See, each end changes as I lower it. Yes, it kind of pivots, end. yeah. And 11, 15, 16. You're honing in. 11 and 15, 16. So we're Yay. Good. So now we're equal. Now normally, if you were cutting a lot of volume mm -hmm. uh, each day, which I, I don't need to do, this is just for myself, uh, you wouldn't probably go to all this trouble, but by doing this, I'll get the maximum amount out of that log of what of the a dimensional lumber that I want, which are four by sixes, uh, four by eights and four by and two by eights and prime heartwood and all heartwood. Yeah, right. Yeah, lovely. So now the next thing I got to do is I got to get the mill the right height, the blade, which, which I can do by just uh, eyeing it. 
and uh, you always go up on this side and down on that side. Up with the blade. Up with up with the uh, the mill. Ah. Because this is where your lifting mechanism is happening. Yes, yes. And that's secondary over there. So you go down over there to to use the weight of this mill to lower that. But here you raise it here. Okay. So I can eye the the blade. Yes. And get it to the height that's at that top line. Okay, that's pretty close. Well, this mill is kind of like the Mercedes, or should I say Tesla, of mills compared to what I saw you and filmed you using last Alaskan, year. Alaskan ch uh, chainsaw, right. That mm. was a lot of work. That whole garden area was done with an Alaskan chainsaw. Mill. Alaskan chainsaw mill. That was Alaskan too much work. Wow. <laughs> Are those eight by eight, those? Yeah, eight by eight. Pillars. Wow. Thanks All to work. Jake and Turbo Sawmill. I'm making my life a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, this is incredible. Yeah, it's really This great. is incredible. It's a really nice mill. It really works. So, yeah. So, I have to fill it with gas and water now. Water is the lubricant. So, you've done your safety check and you're ready to go? Yeah, check, make sure nothing's laying around, like a screws or anything that the blade could hit and throw at you. Uh, and then I just want to line this up and, and cut off the top of the log level with this line. Yeah. So that I can come in and start uh, removing this material and then cut for the dimensional pieces that I have marked here. Great. Start the warrior. Yeah.
So now I'm at the point where I can start cutting uh, the all heart material. Like this is really mostly sap, so I'll throw this away. And uh, I'll burn it, it'll be firewood, Yeah. actually. And uh, so now I'm into what I can cut. I'll go look and see on the other side if I'm actually coming out where I wanted to come out. Yeah, I cut the line out about the eight inches here. Right on the money. Right on the money. The yeah, blade, yeah. that's the thickness of the blade, so it's yes. coming out right where I want. I probably would cut it here so the heart's not in it, but this would be a nice slab. I know it's beautiful. Yeah, really it's great slab. It's amazing how it's so flat and plain. Yeah, I mean, it'd make a great table, oh, giant yeah. table. Yeah. Uh, it's just simply that's not what I need right now. Yeah. yeah. But uh, eventually I'll pull out my uh, slabbing attachment and cut some big slabs. Oh, yeah. So, how are we doing on this side? We're coming out where I laid it out. So, it's coming out correct, exactly correct. Just what you want. 
On the other side, the reason it looks like I'm really losing a lot of heartwood is because of the way it comes in here. Heart crack uh, doesn't always go straight across. It kind of dove a little bit in here. Ah. So I thought, well, I'll just take it down a, a kerf's worth across the top and see if it gets rid of it. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter, but it won't change my layout at all. So with, if you're taking it down, will you do it with your blade horizontal or vertical? Yeah, just horizontal, horizontal. all the way across. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was the log. Nine uh, two by eights and four four by eights, one four by six and three two by fours. The bonuses. Yes, the two by fours are bonuses. <laughs> and then all that firewood. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. She's a good one, isn't she? Oh, she's a good one. She's your your supervisor. Yeah, she is this she's the boss. And she's saying where are all those logs that used to be on the hill for me to run on? How to get a 4 by 8 shunt a 4 by 8 along. How heavy is this thing? I don't know. I can't lift it. <laughs> Damn heavy. Right now, those suckers are heavy. Oh, yeah. Can't believe you're going to go off and play ping pong now. <laughs> Not yet. I'll go rest for a bit first. Good. That's a good stack of lumber.